The Lord richly bless every one of you. And those who are tuning in this morning on our YouTube platform, again, I want to say thank you. Wherever you may be watching from this morning, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you for being a part. Hallelujah. And because you are tuning in this morning, you are tuning into the right channel, the God's channel. And I pray this morning that whatever God is going to be doing here, we also meet you to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. But I want to, you know, encourage you this morning to please uh, click share. Let's um, get more people involved and let's get more people blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I believe that this topic that uh, we started since last week Sunday can and will bless people. Because one thing I've come to realize, you know, is the fact that not many people are savvy when it comes to the knowledge of Elohim. Hallelujah. The Bible said that it's of God to conceal a matter, but of kings to reveal the matter. And not everybody are in position to understand in entirety certain knowledges that have been concealed from us. So it is mandated on our path that we discover knowledge. And when we discover knowledge and the knowledge of the Most High God, then we discover him. When you discover the knowledge of Most High God and you discover him, you also discover his ways. And the ways of God are important, ladies and gentlemen, so that you know what he requires and what he demands of us to do. So that when we uh, do what he demands and require of us. Child of God, there is no telling that the next time you pray, the Lord will even answer you speedily. Because he promised that while you yet speak, I will answer thee. And like we found out last week, there are many reasons why God, ladies and gentlemen, may turn a deaf ear to some of our prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, and many of us have been Praying. We have been in the place of prayer, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we come to realize that not many of these prayers have been answered. Why? What are the reasons, ladies and gentlemen? And these are the things, you know, the Lord laid upon my heart that we should be brought to that place of understanding of these things, you know, so we can deal with them in prayer. So our prayers will not only be effective, but be rewarding, ladies and gentlemen. Any prayer without a reward is not going to, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not going to take you anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is not just uh, communicating with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer also can be rewarding. Apart from the fellowship that prayer draws you into with God. Ladies and gentlemen, it also gives you a platform to ask. And Jesus will say in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 7, he said, ask it shall be given. Seek, you shall find. And they say, knock, it shall be opened. Ladies and gentlemen. And in chapter 14, ladies and gentlemen, the verse 13, he also dealt with the fact that whatsoever you shall ask, ladies and gentlemen, in my name, the Father will do. But then he also gave the prerequisite that we permit God, you know, to do. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I haven't obeyed the commandments. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, who ever obey the word. Obey my word. He said, whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name, the father will do. Are you yes, somebody? So there are reasons why prayers may not be answered. So we are going to continue this morning by the special grace of God and uh, let's see, you know, where God takes us now with this message in Jesus' mighty good name. We took our scriptural reading from the book of um, Proverbs, the one chapter, the verse 28 through the verse 30. Are you here, somebody? If you have your Bible, please, let's turn to the book of um, uh, Proverbs, the one chapter, the verse 28 through the 30. And I want my wife to read real quick. Hallelujah. Amen. Then they will call on me. He said, I then they will call on me. But I will not answer. I will not answer. They he will say then. Then they will call on me. So we mean that then means that there's going to be a preceding action. There's going to be a time, ladies and gentlemen, that we as humans, we always have to call on a supreme God. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Why is supreme God? We got to understand that there is always somebody that is greater than somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, and whoever is greater than somebody, you know, help the lesser person. So as of this time, we are the lesser person that will always be in need of a help. Ladies and gentlemen, there comes a time when even your abilities may not take you even further beyond what your expectations are. Ladies and gentlemen, then you got to depend on people sometimes. And you may ask certain people and they are unable to help you because even they themselves, they also equally need help. Ladies and gentlemen, and what you are demanding might even be greater than what they can do. Ladies and gentlemen, so then what do we do? So there comes that time when you and I may have to call upon somebody that is greater. And in this case, God is always greater. So he said, when that time comes, they will call upon me, but I will not answer. Oh, very disappointing and discouraging statement. But don't let your heart be fainted. And what does it say for them? They will seek me diligently. He said they will seek me diligently. But they so will there's not got find to be a level of impute. Ladies and gentlemen, desperation. Ladies and gentlemen, that you are going to put into seeking God in order to get his help. He said, when you do all that, ladies and gentlemen, he said, I will not be found. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen. So which means that there is a time that God may be found. That was simply means that there is a time that God may avail himself to you in readiness to anything you may ask or you may seek from him. He is there to hear you and he is there to act, ladies and gentlemen, based on what you are asking for. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, but then, when they call, when they seek, I will not answer and they will not find me. Please, I need your attention here, please. And go ahead. What does it say? But they will not find me. Okay. Because they hated knowledge. It said because. Now that word because. Now interjects and gives you. Ladies and gentlemen. The reason why. He will not answer. And he will not be found. Ladies and gentlemen. Based on this particular scriptures. Ladies and gentlemen. We said last week. That four reasons were cited by God. And this reason became. The very point. That allow or make God not to answer them. Ladies and gentlemen. And what were those reasons? And did not choose the fear of the Lord. They did not choose the fear of the Lord. One. They would have none of my counsel. So because of that, they would have none of my I mean, they didn't have none of my counsel. Go ahead. And despise my every rebuke. And they despise my every rebuke. So they would not listen to me when I speak for them. That counsel of the Lord is a right counsel of God which expresses the very intent and right way which are dispensed unto men to live according to the counsel and intent of Elohim. Listen, gentlemen. This counsel was arrived at by God all by himself. Because he's a right God and a righteous God. Listen, gentlemen. He knows the things he expects of us to do, ladies and gentlemen. And once this counsel is committed to us, we do contrary to this counsel, ladies and gentlemen, then we will be held liable, ladies and gentlemen. It is not just a mere counsel, ladies and gentlemen. It's just as having the court system of America, the Supreme Court, comes together. They are what you call the lawmakers. Listen, you know, man. They come together in council and make laws that rules and govern a nation or this nation. Listen, you know, man. And this law is made available. Listen, you know, it's a council from this court system or judicial systems. Listen, you know, man. That are given to the nation for all to observe. And if not, Receive those counsel and to act right. Ladies and gentlemen, according to those counsel, ladies and gentlemen, then they will be held liable. That means that they've offended the law. Are you here, somebody? And the Bible said that they will not have none of his counsel, which means that they refuse to obey according to God's demands and requirements. 
for everybody to live accordingly, ladies and gentlemen, in the right way specified for them to live. And as a result of this, the Bible says they cast every counsel of God to the side. Ladies and gentlemen, and even when God tried to help them out and said, listen, you cannot kick against my counsel. It is my requirement because I expect everybody to live according to the right way and the righteousness of God. Ladies and gentlemen, and he said to them, look, okay, stop, stop. They refused to stop. And in this process, began to rebuke them in order to change them. Ladies and gentlemen, and the Bible said they refused. And when they refused, ladies and gentlemen, that was the moment God decided I will no longer listen to these people and I refuse to be sought of them. Listen, or by them, ladies and gentlemen. And when they do seek me, I will not make myself available. Ladies and gentlemen. So it became a problem, you know, to them. And uh, we did say that there are many reasons that were cited. We also look through other scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, that many even tried, ladies and gentlemen, sending envoys to God. Ladies and gentlemen, because at that moment they saw themselves in captivity and they needed a God that can deliver them out of that captivity, that problem. Ladies and gentlemen, and they sent people to the house of the Lord and go and, go and inquire, should we cry like we cried many years you know, before this? Should we continue to seek your face and pray? Ladies and gentlemen, and the Bible said when they went there, they were discouraged and they were disappointed, ladies and gentlemen, and the Lord rejected them. Why? Because they had refused the counsel of the Lord to pay obedience to the word. Ladies and gentlemen, and as a result of this, listen, and gentlemen, God will not have it. Amen. And they kept weeping and weeping and weeping. And the Lord said, look, the problem is not in your weeping. For you litter my altar with your tears. But the problem is in the obedience. Why don't you just comply? Act right before me. Listen, do what I ask you to do. Listen, and gentlemen, and when you do these things, then the blessing is right there before you. Because the word, I mean, the, the earth has been programmed through the word of God. Genesis chapter 1, the Lord created everything by his word. If you read Genesis chapter 1, it's by his word. The only person that was formed, listen and gentlemen, out of the dust of the earth was man. Listen and gentlemen. And yet, everything worked in the obedience of God's word. So what that means is that when you obey the word, then the word will honor you. When you obey the word, the word will prosper you. So if you obey the word of God, listen and gentlemen, it is mandated that you prosper. And Isaiah, the one chapter, the verse 19 will say, if thou be willing, there's a willingness, willingness to comply, willingness to heed, willingness to adhere to the instructions that have been given. Listen, he said, the moment you are willing and obedient, he said, then you shall eat of the goods of the land. So the goods is already on the land. So in the inability to access the goods, listen, gentlemen, was in their disobedience. And so long as you are disobeying the word of the Lord, then the earth will not favor you as expected. Ladies and gentlemen, even though you try, amen, but you try through what? Sweat. Out of the brown, after the brown of the, out of the brown of that what? Of that sweat shall die, do what? Eat bread. Listen, gentlemen. So it becomes a, an issue and the Lord, the Lord was trying to tell them, listen, you need to attend to these things, amen. It's not just coming before me and start praying. I need you to pray against the prayer that are hindering your, I mean, pray against the things that are hindering your prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is where we derive our topic, praying against prayer hindrances. Ladies and gentlemen, and we got to see these things as hindrances. Whatever it is that you know, if there is something that, that does not permit you, that does not permit you, ladies and gentlemen, or allow you to obey the word of the living God, it's an hindrance. Hindrance to your prayer. The next time you pray, God will not listen. The next time you seek the face of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen, it will not be available to you. It could be available to the next man seated beside you. Listen, you remember, to you, you will not, it will not be available. So while others might be standing and giving their testimony of what God has done for them or the new thing the Lord has done for them, listen, you remember, we may be sitting there and pouting. Listen, you remember, how come this one seems to be blessed and I don't have no occasion to testify? Go back again. Like I said last week, the only way for you to discover Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why God may not be answering you is to do what I call the prayer of inquiry. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1 Samuel, the, eight, uh, the 30th chapter, the verse, 10, the verse 8 to the verse 9, the Bible said that even David used the prayer of inquiry to find out what he should do. Ladies and gentlemen, because as of this time, the enemy have invaded Ziglag, where I was, I mean, the place that was apportioned to him to dwell with the people and his family. 
And this enemy came and uh, took over the enemy and, and went away with the enemy. I'm sorry. Amen. And there was nothing to do. There was no one to help. Listen, you know, and he had to turn to the only one that can help him. The Bible said he called for the priest, Abiata. He said, bring me now the effort. That was the means through which they can connect with God for God to reply or to speak back to them. And the Bible said the moment he spread the effort and called upon God, ladies and gentlemen, instantly the Lord responded. Listen, you know, man. And he said, this is what you shall do. So prayer of inquiry will always make you discover or receive from the Lord the things that are amiss. The very reason why your prayers are not be answered or delayed. Especially when you have put before God a very one particular prayer point. Listen, you know, man. And that prayer point has prolonged for more than 10 good years. It has not been answered. Child of God, why don't you go to God to ask? Ask the Holy Spirit. He's our helper. He, he will help you even in the time of your infirmity. Listen, you know, man. When you pray, he will tell you rightly what is amiss. Listen, you know, man. Uh, is the enemy at work? Or is God at work? Or are you the one hindering yourselves? Listen, you know, man. We got to do this prayer of inquiry in order to find out what the real issue is or are. Listen, gentlemen. And without that, it becomes a problem. There are many other factors and reasons, ladies and gentlemen, that can hinder one's prayer. And this is one other area I want us to look at this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. If your prayers are not being answered, Ladies and gentlemen, you might be dealing with a cloud issue or a closed heaven. Are you here, somebody? You might be dealing with a cloud issue or with a closed heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, if your prayers cannot access God, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it also stands to reason that perhaps God has covered himself with the cloud. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to hide himself from from you or rather you know making sure that your prayer don't come through to him ladies and gentlemen it's a possibility ladies and gentlemen let's let look at something let's look into something you know from the scripture in the book of um, Psalm 35 the verse 13 ladies and gentlemen this is David giving us an insight of the possibility that one's prayers ladies and gentlemen can return back again to you I don't know if you are here you know, sometimes we just lift up our voices and we pray. Father, I'm here, Father. Bless me, Father. We may hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, quite well. We may hear you. We will, oh, we will hear you, ladies and gentlemen. Because we are in close proximity with you. Ladies and gentlemen, but let's ask the question, is God hearing your prayer? How close is God with you at that moment? Listen, gentlemen, if the next man beside you can hear you, listen, gentlemen, how close is God, listen, gentlemen, to you? Don't understand that the presence of the Holy Spirit is already here. So God will always be here to hear. Listen, gentlemen, but the question is, is he hearing you? Listen, gentlemen. And this is what David has to say, listen, gentlemen, in Psalm 35, the verse 13, what, what does it say? for me <laughs> when they were sick my clothing was sackcloth but as for me but as for me when they were sick it means that he was praying for certain people listen you know man and he said as for me listen you know man that my sackcloth it tells you that he was in a state of prayer because back in the biblical days listen, you know, man, when people really want to seek the face of the Lord and also want to show the intensity of their demand or to show God the severity of their problem. Listen, you know, man, they put on sackcloth. Another way of humbling themselves before God. Listen, you know, man, in order to get from God what they were looking for. So David was in the place of praying for people. Listen, you know, man, he wasn't praying for himself. He was praying for others. Listen, you know, man, and he's expressing to you the severity of of what the issue was with those people and with the same severity, he himself got into prayer. Listen, gentlemen. And he said, well, we can look at these people. Their problem is very severe. You know, so I'm not going to do lightly with the prayer. So let me go deeper. Let me express to God 
ladies and gentlemen, the very pain of these people. Maybe they themselves were unable to express the depth of their pain before God. So let me do and express it before God. Ladies and gentlemen, and he put on sackcloth. And the Bible said he even wept for them as though their mothers have died. Ladies and gentlemen. Is that what it says? Yes. <laughs> Read it. My, sack, my clothing was sackcloth. Uh -huh. I humbled myself with fasting. I humbled myself with fasting. And my prayer would return to my own heart. And my prayer will return to my own heart. Ladies and gentlemen, no, 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 no. How is this a possibility in the realms of men? Ladies and gentlemen, have we ever come to that understanding? Ladies and gentlemen, and to believe that there is a possibility that when you pray, your prayers can return back again to your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, before this exposition, ladies and gentlemen, I don't believe people will believe that this is a possibility. Ladies and gentlemen, until David had to go through it, express it in order to put it in the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, for you and I to read that there is a possibility that when you pray, the prayer may return back to your heart. Then we ask the question, what makes it return back? As of the moment, uh, as of this moment, David is praying for people, ladies and gentlemen, and his prayer was returning back to him. Ladies and gentlemen, he did not know the reason why. Ladies and gentlemen, the prayers were returning back to him. He didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, until the verse 15. Somehow the Lord had to reveal that thing to him and say, David, you have been praying and your prayer have been returning back to you. Thank you for making an inquiry to find out why the prayers have been returning back to you because of them. He said, David, let me tell you what you don't know about these people. You may not be everywhere at the same time, but I am God who eyes goes to and fro on the face of the earth seeking whom I may approve of. But as of now, I have disapproved of these people for a long time, but you, you didn't know. And you have been laboring and praying, oh David, I see your heart for these people. Oh David, I see uh, the level of your humility before me in order to change the present circumstances of these people. But David, let me tell you what you don't know. And as the Lord will say to Jeremiah in chapter 7, he said, Jerry, Jerry, don't pray for these people anymore. Don't pray. Don't you see what they are doing? So which means that Jerry didn't see. So there are times you may do things, ladies and gentlemen, that even others may not see. But nothing is ever hidden from God. Ladies and gentlemen, so the Bible will say, somehow the Lord now had to reveal this truth to David. He said, David, let me tell you what they were doing behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, and what does he say? Look at this 15. But in my adversity, in my adversity, they rejoiced. They rejoiced. Hey, hey, whoa. And God said, let me show you. Show, see, see the revelation where, well, well. This is what these people were doing behind you. In your adversities, they were mocking you. They were mocking you. They were calling you names. They were deriding you. They were doing all sorts of crazy things against you. Saying all sorts of nonsense against you. Ladies and gentlemen, go ahead. What and they gathered together. And they gathered together. They, they sat together. And your topic became, ladies and gentlemen, the reason for the gathering. Attackers gathered against me. Uh -huh. And I did not know it. He did not know it. So as of the moment he was praying for these people, or the times he was praying for these people, he didn't know what they were doing behind them. Ladies and gentlemen, and David said, when they were sick, they never asked the question, what is the reason behind their sickness? Could it be that because of all the nonsense they were doing against David, and even against others, because one thing you do with one is, is, is a propensity that you can do with others. Listen, gentlemen, if you can get one, if you slander one, because that's what the Bible is saying right here, that they're behind David, they were slandering David, listen, gentlemen. And once you begin with one or you start with one or you do this to one, there's a tendency that these people might have been doing it to many people. And the Lord have been watching, observing. They say, hey, 
So you people, and you just sit down, take people's issue, and just start discussing, slandering, castigating. Ladies and gentlemen, eh, and they went beyond a boundary, ladies and gentlemen, which now depicted before God, or rather, a, 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 a God saw it as a, a sin. You got to understand that there is always a borderline between righteousness and sin. Once you cross one side and, or you lean to one side, ladies and gentlemen, especially in the sight of sin, then it becomes sin. Slander, gossiping, were disapproved by God. And at this moment, they sat together in council, ladies and gentlemen, and they were doing evil against David. And David didn't know it. And here he was praying, God bless them, God changed their, I mean, bless their situation. Listen, and gentlemen, and the prayers were returning back to David. Pam, pam, pam. And David said, what is going on? How come I'm praying and these things are returning back to me? So which means that David was very sensitive. What else did it say? They tore at me and did not cease. They tore and they did not cease. So which means that every market day, ladies and gentlemen, they will all gather, ladies and gentlemen, and the topic of discussion was David. Ladies and gentlemen, it was the reason for the gathering. And when they come, they will not discuss any other issue, ladies and gentlemen, than to tear David down, defend his character, his personality, ladies and gentlemen, and the Lord was looking at them. And the Lord said, okay, you guys continue. And the more you continue, the more the heaven gets short. Every time they sat, listen, and gentlemen, to discuss about him, the heavens will close a bit. The moment, every time they sat, the heaven kept closing, kept closing, listen, and gentlemen, to the point that now it was time for somebody to intercede for them, listen, and gentlemen, and his prayer will return back onto his heart. And the Lord refused. They were dealing with, David was dealing with, a, with, a, with a, either a closed heaven or a clad issue. Listen, and gentlemen, listen very carefully. There is a borderline you don't cross with God. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that as of this point, you know, now what brought these people under the subjection they found themselves in was because they have touched the anointed of the Lord. You got to understand that it's not everybody you touch. You got to understand that it's not everybody you speak against. You got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, it's not everybody you castigate. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a level of grace that are given to certain individuals. It is already calculated in their life, ladies and gentlemen. So you cannot stand somewhere, ladies and gentlemen, and castigate them. Because the reason why God pushed them into certain things like that is for your own benefit. <laughs> you may not understand what I just said. It's for your own benefit that you may be taught. Ladies and gentlemen. Because if many of these things that are written in the Bible, uh, we cannot find it physically happening, we don't believe it. Ladies and gentlemen. And they touched the anointed of the Lord. And David understood that there are matters, ladies and gentlemen, that are beyond certain people. He himself said that, I, David, I do not exercise myself in matters that are higher than him. So which means that there are matters that are higher. You don't discuss. You don't talk about. You don't castigate them that are involved in it. Ladies and gentlemen, because it can lead to a close heaven and God could be offended. Ladies and gentlemen, because you did. Now, let's see something in Second Peter. Second Peter, the second chapter. 2 Peter chapter 2, the verse 10 and the... Are you now just being blessed? Okay, you will get sweeter soon. And especially those who walk according to the flesh. And especially, and especially those... <laughs> Go ahead. Who walk according to the flesh. Who the walk lust. according to the flesh. You see this flesh, eh? The activities of this flesh. The things this flesh make people do. Ladies and gentlemen. That get God offended. And not knowing that it creates a close heaven over them. 
Ladies and gentlemen, and they labor and labor and labor in prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems as if God has gone on vacation on them. Ladies and gentlemen, no answer. You come to a church and you go to a prophet. Ladies and gentlemen, or you go to a prophetic meeting and you are expecting, hey, man, today God will speak, eh? Oh, you have given yourself to fasting. You have given yourself, you have spoken, spoken, spoken. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be shocked when you sit down. The prophet will pick the person beside you. We pick the other one on your right. Pick the one behind you. Pick the one in front of you. And service is over. You'll go back. Hey! God, you didn't speak again today. Can I take my time? What, what, what does it say? In the lust of uncleanness uh -huh. and despise authority. They despise authority. They are presumptuous. Presumptuous, presumptuous, I want presumptuous, ladies and gentlemen, is to believe something that is false. Talk about something that is false. You know, you just imagine stuff about people and you think that this is what it is. Assumption. Ladies and gentlemen, and the Lord is looking at you. Say, ah, why do you call what is for, I mean what is not as though it is? This one, it, she didn't do it. He didn't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, what, why do you? Listen, that's why you got to be very careful about your perception and your thinking. Because your thoughts could be influenced by the devil in order to ensnare you. And when you carry out, ladies and gentlemen, your thought, then the heavens can be closed. It's a device to shut up your heavens. Ladies and gentlemen, so we must learn to shut our mouth up sometimes. Mm -hmm. It sounded aggressive. But what does it say? Go ahead. They are self-willed. They are self-willed. And they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Listen now. Listen to the next statement. What does it say? Whereas uh -huh. angels, angels who are greater in power and might uh -huh. do not bring a reveling accusation against them before the Lord. This is what he's saying. Now, let me use myself as an example. It doesn't matter what I do here. It doesn't matter my sin here. Ladies and gentlemen, angels cannot go before God to tell God, God, look at what he has done. <laughs> that is what he's telling you. Angels cannot. Listen, and gentlemen, do they know the plans of God? Has it been revealed to them? They are also only messenger. It is only what God tells them. That's what they do. Listen, gentlemen, and he's telling you that they understand, ladies and gentlemen, the level of authority that is bestowed, ladies and gentlemen, of certain individual. He said, Look, don't go there, don't talk about them, leave that matter alone, ladies and gentlemen, because when you cast them, ladies and gentlemen, and you go between or go beyond a border, ladies and gentlemen, God will get offended and angry and become a sin against you. And David will say, Deliver me from presumptuous sin. So he become a sin. Then it shuts the heaven over, ladies and gentlemen. And I remember a, 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 a testimony of um, Benny Hinn. One day he went for a crusade, ladies and gentlemen, and God didn't show up. Ladies and gentlemen, and he went to inquire, God, why did he didn't show up? And the Lord said, you were in conversation with a man, and you were speaking negatively against Kenneth Copeland. And he said, because of that, I didn't show up. So now I need you to carry yourself to come in Copeland and go and apologize and he will pray for you. Okay? And the heavens be open again. Now, now, these are people of authority, equal authority. The ladies and gentlemen, yet one is higher before God. One has a grace, even higher before God. And look at what he did. And the Lord didn't show up. Heaven closed until he inquired. The Holy Spirit said, this is what you did. So go now and apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at Second Samuel, the 26th chapter, the verse 9. Then we'll go, I mean, first Samuel chapter 26, the verse 9. Then we'll go to second Samuel chapter 1, the verse 14. Are you still being blessed? Hallelujah. First Samuel, the 26th chapter, the verse 9. What does it say? But David said to Abishai, uh -huh. do, don't, do not destroy him, uh -huh. for who can stretch out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? I almost said Martin Luther in my tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, Ooh, we touch the anointed of the Lord and be guiltless. 
So anytime you speak against dignitaries, anytime you speak against, ladies and gentlemen, men that have been anointed by God, ladies and gentlemen, you become guilty. Me, as much as the prophetic grace is upon me, I may see certain things. Trust me, not everything I see, I talk about. You will never catch me on this pulpit. Using this pulpit to cut the men of God's name. This one I just called Benihin and Ege. It's on in, a, in a different light. If you I didn't hear me call their names. I focus on the scripture. So you somebody to be preaching on this altar. Eh? Men of God, when I don't know the grace given to them, I'm closing my heavens. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm closing my heavens. Leave them alone. First, second Samuel, the one chapter, the verse 14. So David said to him, How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? How was it that you were not afraid to put your hand to destroy the anointed of the Lord? Or that, that word means, How were you not afraid to castigate the anointed of the Lord? To call him names or call her names and all that kind of stuff. Ladies and gentlemen. I remember a few years ago when, you know, say growing up, and uh, people rose up against me, and were fighting me. Because when it comes to the prophetic ministry, you may never understand the prophet. I'm telling you, we are being used crazily, ladies and gentlemen. Even even some some of the prophets don't even understand themselves when they are being used. And these people rose up against me, and da 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 da, da until one day they went to a church service. Ladies and gentlemen, and they had invited this other prophet from Africa. Okay, while they were in that service, the prophet came to them while they were seated. The two of them. He said, I see two coffins in front of you. One is for you. You, this one is your coffin. There is a man of God. You guys have scattered, you have scandalized this guy. Okay, and he's a righteous man of God. You know, when they told me the story, I'm a righteous man of God. I said, hey, (laughs) thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Are you here, somebody? Amen. And he said, you guys, you have destroyed this ministry. You are talking bad against him. He said, now you guys go back again and apologize. If you don't do that in three months from today, the two of you will be buried inside this coffin. And they ran to me. Sorry, Papa. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I said, Nida, your mother have killed you. Okay? And I had to pray for them. And thanks be to God, they are still alive today. Are you here, somebody? It can close the heavens and, and the heavens can be closed. Now, listen, listen. Sin can close the heavens. Anything you commit against God as sin can cause your heavens to be short. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the book of Hebrew, uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 17. Deuteronomy 11, verse 17. This is Moses clearly warning Israel. Let's take heed that God can, 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 can shut the heavens against them. The heavens can be shut. And what does he say? Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you. He said, lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you. And he shut up the heavens. He so- shut up the heavens. Heavens can be shut. There is a gentleman. Okay, okay, let's jump down. Let's jump now. We have heard that one. Let's go to 1 Kings, the 8th chapter, the verse 35. Through the verse 36. 1 Kings, the 8th chapter. You know, I'm decided to take my time and not to rush this message so that it will settle well with you. Mm-hmm. Hear me clearly and hear me clearly well. Listen, gentlemen. So that you, you stop pouting and, you know, crying and, uh, God, why are you not answering me? There are reasons. I'm showing you down. Go ahead. Uh-huh. When the heavens are shut up. He said, when the heavens are shut up. Now, this is Solomon speaking. Now, Solomon is dedicating the temple he had built. Listen, gentlemen, unto God. Then he began to pray. He said, when the heavens are shut up, then the question is, when is the heaven shut up? When the heavens are shut up, when is the heaven shut up? When did they, what did they do 
for the heavens to be shut up. Ladies and gentlemen. He said when the heavens are shut up. Now you got to understand. We just read Deuteronomy 11 verse 17. David, Moses was equally telling Israel. Ladies and gentlemen that God because of your sin can shut up the heaven. Now listen very carefully. Now between Moses and Solomon. This is 480 years apart. Why am I bringing this to you here? I want to let you know that in the days of Moses, Moses discovered that the heavens can be shot against somebody. And maybe those people in those days, they, maybe they didn't believe that it's a possibility until they were told. Listen, gentlemen. And maybe they thought that, okay, Moses is dead. Amen. So God will no longer shut the heaven as if it, Moses was the reason why heavens is been shot. Moses is telling us because of your sin. And here comes Solomon. 480 years later, repeating the same thing. Listen, gentlemen. That the heavens still can be shot. Then my question is, can God still shut the heavens even to do it to date? Or uh, to date? What was a possibility in the days of Moses? What also was discovered as a possibility in the days of Solomon? Listen, gentlemen. And in my day, Prophet Kenneth, I'm still telling you it is a possibility. And what does he say? When the heavens are shut up uh -huh. and there is no rain uh -huh. because they have sinned against you. Because they have sinned against you. When they pray toward this place. When, 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 when. Then that means that a time now is interjected. Listen, gentlemen. When, which means that when you don't pray, okay, what happens? When you pray towards this place uh -huh. and confess your name. And, and confess the name of the Lord. And turn from their sin. And turn from their sin confession then you turn away which is repentant listen you cannot continue slandering and doing the same thing over and over just as those men were doing against David listen gentlemen and here comes David praying and his prayer is returning back to his heart how long were these people castigating David for listen gentlemen and what does it say and turn from their sin because you afflict them. Uh -huh. Then here in heaven. He said then. He said that is the moment God hears. So if you don't confess and repent. Listen gentlemen. Forget your prayers. You are wasting your time. Mm. You are just wasting your time. Because you cannot confess now. And tell the Lord Lord. I'm very 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 sorry. And God okay. Okay. Since I've heard you, okay. Open the, the heavens again. And then you return back to the next day. And God keep open, close, open, close. You will close, God will open. You will close, God will open. Mm -hmm. you, will, you and God is doing dali dabi. And God said, okay, my hand is tired though. I put my hand down. And so long you want to continue, let the heavens be shut. The day you realize all your pain, that nobody helps you, no help from God, and you now realize the reason behind, and you begin to deal with those things in prayer, Truly before me, and you stop, he said, Then I will begin to hear. Then you will seek me, you will find me. Let's go to Lamentation, the third chapter, the verse 44. Lamentation, the book of Lamentation, it was that name wasn't just given to you, the title wasn't just given to you, too. just like that. They were lamenting. The book of Lamentation is the book of Lamentation. Lamentation is beyond weeping and grumbling. Are you here? Lament your life. Bitter life. Difficulties. And the funny thing that they were lamenting before God. Ah, yeah, God. If only you have seen my problems. Eh? You have seen. And at the same time, you have seen the sin. The unrepentant act. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. La, la, la. Okay, go ahead. Uh, third chapter, Lamentation chapter 3, verse 44. Verse 44. You have covered yourself with the cloud mm -hmm. that prayer should not pass through. You have covered yourself with a cloud. First, we discover in First King chapter 8 that the Lord can cover the heavens. And this time around, he covers himself with a cloud so that prayers cannot come through. Listen, gentlemen. So that prayers cannot come through. And this is where, as a child of God, you got to be sensitive. You got to get sensitive. Listen, get sensitive with the Holy Spirit. Listen, the moment you begin to pray, a 
when you experience in the place of prayer that there is a thickness and unheaviness in the place. Listen, gentlemen, the Holy Spirit might just be telling you that the heavens have been shut against you. It's giving you insight. Listen, gentlemen, that the heavens might have been listen, gentlemen, close against you. When you feel the atmosphere, you have to be very sensitive. Thickness. Staleness. Listen, gentlemen. Prayer is not just going there and praying with your mind. And just praying with your lips. Father, I thank you. Thank you for what you got done. Thank you, oh God. Forgive me for my sins. Thank you, oh Lord. And give me my daily bread, oh God. As I'm going, and I just watch over me, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Who did you talk? Who did you think you just spoke to? Just you just spoke to your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your husband or your wife. You are talking to a supreme God. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. You cannot rush it. When you you got to be sensitive to prayer. You got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen. And he will, will give you sensitivity to what is going on once you initiate prayer. And once you sense a thickness around you, you feel a staleness around you. He's telling you that the heavens somehow, either you are dealing with the close heaven or you are dealing with the cloud. Listen, gentlemen. And we suggest to you that there is a reason for it. So what do you do? You go into a prayer of inquiry. Lord, what is the reason behind the short heaven and the cloud? And the spirit of the Lord, if you are very sensitive, he will begin to tell you. That sin, it comes in your thought. Sometimes injected into your heart. Oh, you just spoke roughly against uh, Mrs. Uh, Johnson. And the Lord needs you to repent because right now the heavens are shut over you and it's a cloud that refuses your prayer to go through. Hence you are feeling the stillness and the thickness around you. That is one of the only way the Holy Spirit will have to express it to you for you to get an understanding that the heavens is closed and there's a cloud over you. It makes you to feel the stillness and the thickness around you. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are in prayer, real prayer, you know, you know, better out of a genuineness of heart. Ladies and gentlemen, you, know, you are open to the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, people of prayer, they understand this truth, I'm telling you. Listen, they don't just go there, you know, with their just mind. No, 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 no. They get in tune with the Holy Spirit. Listen, gentlemen. Because God does not just communicate verbally. He also communicates, ladies and gentlemen, with your sensory. He allows you to feel what is going on. Then, when you are told what is going on, you slander somebody, you are committed this sin. Ladies and gentlemen, please, child of God, I say this again. Listen, we may not have the whole day to pray prayer of repentance inside the church. We are only limited to maybe two or three hours. Ladies and gentlemen, but with this knowledge you have gained today, you will go home. Ladies and gentlemen, not until the cloud gives way. Don't stop the prayer of forgiveness and repentance. It's like pleading. God, oh, I'm so sorry. How sorry are you? Because anybody can just come into prayer. Oh, Father, forgive me for the sins that I just, uh, which I just committed. You know, and you say it with psychedelism. With impunity. Sarcasm. Listen, you know, man. And, and, and no seriousness into it. Amen. No conviction in your heart. No, no display, you know, to the fact that you are indeed sorry. In the Old Testament, they put on sackcloth. Listen, you know, to express before God how humble and sorry they are. Today we rush through like he, as if we are buying McDonald's. Listen, you know, man. And you walk away and thinking that the God had your prayer. No, he didn't because the clouds didn't shift. Listen, you know, man. When you know the cloud has shifted, the atmosphere begins to give way around you. If you are sensitive, the atmosphere begins to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, 
and the atmosphere becomes thinner, then you see yourself receiving a level of grace. And that grace now is what allows you to climb higher spiritually in the prayer. Listen, what is happening is that the Holy Spirit is telling you that the Lord have heard and the Lord have forgiven. So the pattern of the cloud or the atmosphere around you now, the thinning of the atmosphere around you now suggests that the Lord now is forgiving. He has forgiven you. Now grace is giving now to not continue any other prayer you want to say or anything you want to say after that. Next and gentlemen, it's going to go through. But if the place is still stay heavy, ladies and gentlemen, and you rush through your prayers, trust me, the prayers have returned back. It didn't go nowhere. I have to tell you, as a prophet of God, who is exposed to the chains of the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, this is the truth, which many believers don't know. Not even every man of God knows this truth. Ladies and gentlemen, then the prayer ascends unto God. When you go to the book of Revelation, chapter 6, chapter 8, ladies and gentlemen, Amen. Nine. Amen. The prayer of the saints we are offered. And we are collected in heaven. So which means that the prayer traveled. <laughs> Listen, gentlemen. Then was collected. So from the earth land to the heavens. Listen, gentlemen. So you had to pass through dimensions. And the angels received the prayers. And missed it with incense. And the Bible said they poured it out again. Onto the earth. And answer was given. There's a mystery to this thing. Are you here, somebody? So not until, don't be in a hurry to leave until you feel the atmosphere is open. Heaven is open. The cloud has dissipated. Ladies and gentlemen, then you can continue. A grace will be given to you to continue in the prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, if it takes you three hours for this thing to happen, that is the three hours you give just to tell the Lord you are sorry. Don't rush through it. Ladies and gentlemen, I got and you think that God has heard you. No, 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 no. You don't understand spiritual things. Listen, you and say a lot of people prayers and not be answered. Because they don't understand this truth. And the Bible says, and Jesus will go up on the mountain. Why does he have to go up the mountain? Because in the valley there's pollution. Listen, gentlemen. So which means that he was dealing with two clouds. The clouds that was in the valley and the cloud up the mountain. And the one up the mountain was different from the one in the valley. Ladies and gentlemen, the one on the mountain is clear. Ladies and gentlemen, but the one in the valley have been polluted by the sins of the people. Let me prove this. Let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 22, the verse 41. I'm taking you to another direction now and I believe I will end with this next week. We'll continue. So it was the next day that Balak took Balaam and brought him up to the high places of Baal. Hold on. So it was. So it was that Balaam took who? Balak. Uh, Balak took, took Balaam. Balaam. Balaam was supposed to be a prophet. But his, his, pro, his prophetic ministry doubled between God and every other gods. Ladies and gentlemen. And took Balaam. To what? To where? To the mountain of Baal. Ladies and gentlemen, mountain of Baal. Baal is a demigod. Baal is a deity. Baal is an idol people worship. Ladies and gentlemen, and upon this mountain, they've always worshipped Baal. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we know? Because this mountain, I mean, I mean, Balak was used to this mountain. So he knew of this mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, because that was the mountain where they had always, ladies and gentlemen, sacrifice to a bar. He said, come, let's go there. Ladies and gentlemen, because if we go down the valley, I don't know what is going on in the valley that can hinder our prayer. Mm. So let's go up the mountain to a God I know. Okay? And they went up the mountain, not knowing that that mountain has already been polluted. Ladies and gentlemen, and they are trying to seek Jehovah God Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, and they are standing upon the mountain of Baal. Listen very, very carefully. I will take this deeper soon. Ladies and gentlemen, and here they are on the mountain of Baal, polluted. And you want to communicate with the holy God from a polluted position or polluted place. Ladies and gentlemen, and maybe while they were standing there, they were praying and praying and praying and praying, and God did not answer. 
Because they were standing somewhere they suddenly polluted. The heavens had already been closed over that place. You communicate there, God will not hear you. Listen, gentlemen. And then I said to him, he said, hi. Oh, man, God is only seeing you. Okay, do your sacrifice. Do your sacrifice. And he laid seven sacrifices down on the altar. I mean, a total of 14 sacrifices. Listen, gentlemen. Now, let's go to the verse 23. Uh, chapter 23. The verse 1 through the verse 3. Then Balaam said to Balak, build seven altars to me here and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps I will go. I will go. Why do I need to go? I'm already on the mountain. You have given your sacrifice, so let me pray. Let me communicate to you over God. Listen, gentlemen, to hear what I can do in order to afflict these people for you. Listen, gentlemen. And it was on that mountain, even with the sacrifices. Listen, gentlemen. And try to come in, and the Lord will not answer. So he said, You wait here, stand by the sacrifice, and let me go. So, which means that he's moving away from a place that had been contaminated. Listen, gentlemen. And going into a different place. And what does the Bible say? Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows. The word there, perhaps, means that he had tried before. Listen, gentlemen. And God didn't hear. He said, Okay, God didn't hear in this location. Let me go to this other location. Perhaps this time around, the Lord will hear me here. And what did the Bible say? Did it? The Lord will come to meet me, and whatever He shows me, I will tell you. Hold on. So the he... Lord, hold on. The Lord will come to meet me. The Lord will come to meet me. So when you begin to pray and you offer your sacrifice, the Lord will come to meet you. But now He said, "Lift your sacrifices here." So which means that as He lifted, as He he, he put the sacrifices down. Listen, you know, man. I was waiting for God to come. God didn't show up. And God said, I ain't coming there. You ain't going to communicate to me where. Your, pos your location is bad. Where you are standing is polluted. It's a place given to idol. Why will you communicate with me from that place? Listen, you know, man. And he left the sacrifice. He said, okay, you wait. I'm coming. Oh, baby, God. Let me change position. And change location. He said, perhaps this time around the Lord will come. Listen, gentlemen, and look at what it. Look so Balaam it. went to a desolate height. And the Bible say, and then Balaam went to a desolate height, which means that the word that desolate means that there was nothing That's there that could offend or block someone's prayer. Listen, gentlemen, it was desolate, empty. It was, I mean, it was, it was, it was pure. There was nothing, nothing, nothing that could hinder his prayer. Then he went to that location. It was that very spot and that location that God met with him. What does that mean? Child of God. Let me draw this, you know, home. There are times some of you. Let me, you know, now we have dealt with the cloud of God now. Now let's deal with, we are dealing with satanic clouds. Listen, gentlemen. There are times you rent an apartment or you move into a house that was previously occupied by somebody. And such people have done abominably in that place. And that place has been polluted. A land can be polluted. Listen, gentlemen, when you study Leviticus, the 18th chapter, the land can be polluted. Chapter 6, verse 18. The land can be polluted. A place can be polluted. Listen, gentlemen, it is not everywhere God comes to. Are you here? So that place has been polluted. Listen, you know, by those who once lived there, they serve idols there. A gateway and a pathway of a portal have been opened to their demigod. And the spirit behind that altar they have served. Listen, you know, man, I've used that door as their gateway and access to that individual. Even if that person leaves that place, listen, you know, man, that portal and that door is open. Listen, you know, and the most will be going in and out. They have marked that place as their territory. If you enter that place and pray, listen, gentlemen, you ain't nothing is happening. Listen, gentlemen. And some people they move into a place. Amen. From where they were coming from, things were okay. Now they move into a new place. Listen, gentlemen, and not knowing who had lived there before. Listen, gentlemen, and the first night they sleep. Listen, gentlemen, their dream is crazy. Second night, crazy. One month, crazy. 
everything just start going bad, going down. Ladies and gentlemen, a child of God I used to pray before in the old apartment and old house. Now you get into a new place. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time you say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. There are things there telling you that no, you are not in the right place. This is our abode. Our stronghold is here. And what you are trying to do here is not permitted here. Ladies and gentlemen, and they are blocking your prayers and they can set a cloud over you. If Solomon will say that God covers himself with the cloud, there is also stand to reason that the enemy can issue out a cloud. And here you are. And the question is, under what cloud are you praying? Ladies and gentlemen, and you are there, you are trying to do all. I remember some years ago, I, I went to, you know, you see, these things I'm teaching you now, amen, if you don't look into the scripture, you don't get it. You know, if you read it, you know, in a literal sense, you will never catch the revelation behind it. Because revelation are not taught, they are called. Are you here, somebody? I remember some years ago, you know, when the Lord exposed the scripture to me, amen, I, I began to have understanding. And now, anytime people, I always tell you, amen, you are moving into a new home, you are, you know, I mean, even the houses we have built, two houses, we are living in the second home now. Ladies and gentlemen, even from the one they started the foundation, I went there to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, less that spot, ladies and gentlemen, has been a burial ground. They have buried somebody there. Wicked person dead. Something bad was done there. Ladies and gentlemen, and there you are praying and spirits are coming in, in and out. Ladies and gentlemen, and they're telling you, you know, you can't stay here, you can't stay here because of what has been done to me here. Da, 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 da. And, and some of you, you don't get it. I know the place. And if perhaps there has been blood here, or whatever nation or sin that polluted this place, now a new occupant is coming to take ownership of this place. Eh? A righteous one of God, a child of God is coming. And God is territorial. So therefore, this area now, if it was given to idol worship before, it is no longer, you pray to cancel those things because they can have effect against you. That's why I encourage once you, I mean, I do it now for everybody. Amen. You move into a new place. Amen. I just come there. Amen. I begin to pray. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever has been there, and I remember this, you know, daughter of mine one time, you know, move into, you know, into this new apartment. You know, I went there. You know, in short, before I went out, was the one that told her, you know, I said, look, I'm getting the revelation of where you just moved in. Okay, because, you know, at first she didn't, you know, you know, tell me that she had moved. So I picked it up in the spirit, you know, because I'm, I'm seeing, you know, so many attacks, you know, against her. And I'm asking, Lord, what is going on here? And the Lord said, you need to go pray, pray for her. That apartment she, you know, has been polluted. So I went there, amen, to do my prayers. Go and behold, the minute I closed my eyes, I said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the wall in the in the pantry. It's like the thing open. The wall inside pantry open. Who do I see? I see people that you know they look like humans, but they were not humans. Matching in in their numbers. I said, Hey, what is happening here? And the Lord said, This is the thing that is dealing with her. Listen. So every time she, she was so fervent in prayer. Amen. And she was losing it. And she was losing. I was seeing the prayer. I was seeing her temperature of spiritually going down. The fire was going down. Listen, gentlemen. And she was being plagued. The children being plagued. Everybody. Things were not working. Listen, gentlemen. Until I went and dealt with that thing. I said, you have entered into a difficult place. Listen, gentlemen. And that's why your prayers are being. Now they are using your prayer to attack you. Listen, gentlemen. Because you are in the war zone. Listen, once you initiate warfare. You are not fighting against God. You are fighting against an enemy. So once you are in their territory, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't know what to do, listen, they can do all sorts of stuff against you there. Ladies and gentlemen. And again, that understanding. Ladies and gentlemen. Likewise, the moment you dedicate that place, you sanctify that place, and you close that portal, close that door, that gateway that has been open, wicked gateways, ladies and gentlemen, and you shut it, Amen. Through prayer, sanctify the place and make the place holy. Ladies and gentlemen, 
very soon angels will start assessing you there. Because angels too will not come. Ladies and gentlemen, and there are some of the lack of knowledge things that is plaguing many of us. Ladies and gentlemen, that always keep this heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, so with this knowledge, amen, you go home, you have moved into a place you don't know the origin of. You don't know who, who was there before, what they did, the kind of portal, doorway, gateway, they have been opened into that place. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember one of that case, I went to pray for somebody. Many years ago, immediately I entered into the room. Who do I see sitting there spiritually? Buddha. I said, eh? Hey. And I told this, the, the, the person, I said, a Chinese person lived there before. And when they went and checked the record, because the male was still coming in, below and behold, it was a Chinese person. And I said, hey, hey. Now I see. Ladies and gentlemen. So these things can hinder. So these are the things you got to fight against in your prayer. And they can hinder your prayers. If you were proactive before in prayer, ladies and gentlemen, and you begin to see your temperature going down. Ladies and gentlemen, things are not working. Things keep going down and going down and going down. They could be blocking you. The moment you fall asleep and you say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what they have done, they have projected a slumber, a cloud of slumber over you. Are you here? I didn't mean to weak your faith, but to give you spiritual truth. Are you here? So there are many things that are hindering their prayers that we must pray against. Rise up on your feet. This moment, don't be discouraged. Because I know some of you now, you are very heavy. Are you here? Now, I want us to pray. First of all, we are going to go before God and to tell the Lord, Lord, any sin that, have, that is hindering me or hindering my prayers from getting to you, Lord, forgive me. I choose today to repent and to turn away from those things so my prayers can again be answered by you, O oh God. Wherever you are, just close your eyes and lift up your petition before God. Talk to him with the genuineness of your heart. Talk to him in the genuineness of your heart. Talk to him that you are like you are sorry. Genuine repentance is that of the heart. A contrite heart. A contrite heart. That heart that displayed before God that indeed I'm sorry. You will always need help. There come a time when you will need help. And let it be that this help will come from God. Ah, Oh, Jesus. Talk to him and be forever be free. Tell him you are sorry. Tell him you are sorry. Tell him you repent. In any way, the heavens have been closed over you. God has covered himself with a cloud not to hear your prayers. In Jesus, mighty good day. Can I see John the ninth chapter, the verse thirty-one? See conversion scripture. Can I see it real quick? Can it be projected? John the ninth chapter. The verse 31. It's like the Holy Spirit moved me to this scripture while you were praying. So, I believe that there are reasons or there's a reason why God is taking me here. Because there are times when we want to be intellectual, ladies and gentlemen, before God or more than God. 
Ah, uh, where we say, ah, but uh, Jesus, the Bible says Jesus uh, sits at the right hand of God the Father, continually make intercession for us all. Yeah. That's why we are still alive. That intercession, ladies and gentlemen, afford you the grace. And what is grace? Grace is not only favor. Ladies and gentlemen, grace is extension of time given for you to repent. Hence, you have grace. Ladies and gentlemen, and this is what he said. Now, we know that God does not yet see us. This is after Jesus has healed this guy's blind eye. New, New Testament. After Jesus has healed this blind guy. Because after this, even Jesus he met the guy again in the temple. The guy said, let me follow you. And the blind man is selling the Pharisees. He said, you and I, we know, we know, we know. Imagine a blind man. Blind all his life. Ladies and gentlemen, but yet was not blind to the truth. He said, you and I, we know, we know. Teachers of Israel. That God does not hear sinners. But. If anyone is a worshiper of God and does, and you see, yeah, does his will, very important. He hears them. Are you here, somebody? So prayers can be rejected. Not all prayers enter heaven. Are you here, somebody? So again, you are going to pray and really be serious in it and tell the Lord, God, I am a sinner. I'm a sinner. And my sins are hindering me and, my sins are and hindering, hindering my prayers. Hindering my prayers. Father, prayers. Forgive me. Father, forgive me. Anything in me that makes me sin. Anything because that thing that in you is sin. what is hindering the prayers from being answered. So that is the thing you must deal with. If the spirit of fornication is in you, if the spirit of adultery is in you, if the spirit of lie, backbiting, gossip is in you, that is the thing you must pray against that is making you do sin, that is making you commit sin. Pray against that thing right now and let it be broken from you. Let it be destroyed from you. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift up your voice as you pray. Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty good day. My last prayer point for me. Can we see Ephesians chapter 2, the verse 1 and 2? Ephesians 1. Because I haven't, pray, I haven't preached this preaching, and if we don't practicalize it, it makes no sense. Are you here, somebody? Ephesians chapter 2, the verse 1 and the verse 2. He said, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses. So trespasses kills you. Are you listening? Trespasses kills you. It might not kill you physically, but spiritually, you become a dead man. So truth, I mean, you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. He made alive so that you and I cannot sin or should not sin anymore. And the Bible says that those who sin are not of God. Are you here, somebody? And what does it say in the verse 2? In which you once walked. In which you once, once walked. So you once walked in these trespasses. Okay? But now he has made you alive. Ladies and gentlemen, according. I'm sorry. In which you once walked, according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. So there is a power in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, and what does this power do? The Bible said the spirit. So it is not only.
only a prince and a power that is in the air, but it's also a spirit. Who now works in the sons of disobedience? So which means that that spirit is in people who disobey. If you disobey, you are under the power and the influence of this prince. Ladies and gentlemen. And so long as you are under the grip of this prince, trust me, you remain a slave of sin. And you will always sin. Ladies and gentlemen. And then, your prayers are hindered. So what do you do first? Somebody who has understanding of this scripture, then you must deal with this prince. You must deal with his power. You must deal with this spirit. You must deal with the influence of this spirit. Whatever moves you, even Paul in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, he said, them, them, them that are led, you must be led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. You must be led. In Matthew chapter 4, Verse 1. And Jesus was led by the Spirit of God. So whatever makes you sin is not of God, but a different spirit. And where is that spirit? That spirit is around you. That spirit is in the air. And that spirit can be in you. Ladies and gentlemen. Propelling you to just act and to just sin. That is what is hindering your prayers. Now lift up your right hand. I need you to pray and deal with it. Ladies and gentlemen, a blind man said that you and I will know that God does not answer sinners. Ladies and gentlemen, and that could be a blessing blocker. Ladies and gentlemen, and you are wondering, before you do this prayer, put your hand down. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is reminding me something you told me earlier on. I remember years ago, I think I've given this testimony before. A lady walked into, walk into this office. Then my office was right here. And uh, before the lady would come in, the Lord said to me, he said, when she comes in, tell her that she needs to repent and confess her sin and pray for her and uh, things will be okay. You know. And uh, the lady would come in, sit down, and I said, you know, first, what will I do? You know, do, what can I do for you? And this lady began to tell me a story, pathetic stories. Even to the point that I felt so sorry. I must, I, in short, that woman brought me to tears. And I'm telling myself, how can somebody go, I mean, go through all this stuff? Educated woman. Ladies and gentlemen. So she was on a platform, amen, better platform of succeeding. She never lacked documentation. She's not married, no kids. Not, I mean, many things were wrong. Even to eat, 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 eat here in America, that woman could, she's squatting somewhere. First on the street. She told me a story. I'm like, man, how could this be? Amen. Then I prayed. I said, don't worry. You know, the Lord will do it for you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will change things. You know, I've seen God do things like this. You know, I began to encourage her. And I did a prayer. And the Lord said to me, because she was about living. And the Lord said to me, now nah, you need to call her back. Every prayer you have prayed for her has been rejected. Because she hasn't done the confession. Tell her she has to confess her immoral sins. I said, hey, immoral? Which matter do I have to tell this woman that she needs to confess her sins? Immoral sins. What I have never disclosed on this altar, I disclosed today. The woman was sleeping with a man of God. And the man of God was married. Ladies and gentlemen, and I told the lady, I said, lady, you know, this is what the Lord is telling me. Eh? If you don't, if you don't, if you don't confess now, everything I've said, pray, the Lord said, has been rejected. And this is the reason why your heavens have been shut. And why you are in that predicament. It's a curse, it's a taboo. Because anytime you engage men of God, and you bring, you bring them down, there's a curse to it. It's not, I'm telling you, me, me, if me, if I come to you, uh, to talk, run away from me. 
That's why too, I don't want anybody to come close to me. I have a wife. Oh. Hey. Chocolate. Are you here? Even if I am quarreling with my wife, and this thing, this thing is hungry me to do, ah. I will rather go and beg her. Yes, I'm sir. very sure you. Yes, because the value to the anointing. I can't purchase it. Even my father don't have the money to buy it for me. So why would I why should I lose it over 30 minutes of pleasure? Amen. Are you here? And the lady was arguing with me. Ah, oh, man of God, no, 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 no. I didn't see where. You didn't hear where. Ah, no, no, I don't do this kind of stuff. Ah, da, 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 da. Oh, da, 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 da. La, ba, da, da. Hey, for a minute, I got confused. Oh. I was confused. Did I hear God speaking or what is this? Or was this my mind? And I'm looking at the lady and say, hey, PK, ah, you have messed up today. This prophecy didn't enter. But this one is not the prophecy where you sense. This one, I heard a voice, audible voice behind my ears telling me. Hey. And immediately, the Lord gave me the man's first name and last name. The place where they met. The last time they met. By the time I gave details, she started, I was seated on the chair. Suddenly fell on the floor and began to weep. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Oh, man of God, forgive me. I said, it's not me that he will forgive you. You didn't sin against me. You sin against God. It was in his love that he asked you to confess so that you will be prayed for in order to restore you back. So that every prayer I pray now will be effective for you. God don't want you to die in this misery. You were on the street corner when God saw you. You have been crying and the Holy Spirit have pity. It's okay. You know, let me help my daughter out. And brought you here. Listen, gentlemen. So why were you, you could have been struck like Ananias was struck. And you were, as if it made me confused, as if I didn't know what I was saying. Amen. And the lady will be prayed for and restored. Amen. And I said, don't worry, go your way and see no more. Even Jesus in John chapter 8, he told the woman caught in adultery. He said, where are your accusers? He said, there are no more. At that moment, the woman was happy. And Jesus said, no, 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 it's not over. Because I said, <laughs> Uh, 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 where are your accuser? No, it doesn't stop there. Now you go and see no more. Amen. Are you here, somebody? Yes, Child of God, trust me, you will lose a lot. You, I tell you, you will lose a lot. You will lose a lot. Many people have given their. Oh God, I, I need to do something else. Okay. Proverbs chapter 5. The Bible says you will give your age to the clear one. Let's start from the verse 7. And I will get into another service. Are you being blessed? Oh, you have McDonald's right now. How many of you are looking at McDonald's? Uh -huh. Look at what he said. He said, therefore, hear me now, my children, and do not depart from the words of my mouth. Very important. See the words of this mouth? Ah, very important. He who finds it, find life. Uh -huh. What does he say? Go ahead. Remove your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house. No, now, now, God is not talking to every woman. Who, so, ladies here, don't get offended. Are you here? Except you, except you are like this woman. Who, uh -huh. Now, what does he say? Go ahead. I want to show you something. Because sometimes we are, we are devoured of knowledge. And we are being robbed. And we are asking God, God, how come you are not blessing me now? I need to be married by now. Oh, God. God of Israel. Now, 
He said, less, less, less. Less you give your honor to others. Be seated. Sit at one minute. Let me finish this one. Are you here? Somebody is, today is your redemption. Are you here? People who don't live their life away anyhow. And you don't have understanding. God said, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Don't understand why. Look at it. He said less. He said when you go to the door of a house, when you go to her, ladies and gentlemen, now this is not just her. He's talking about a, a immoral woman. Are you here? Amen. Now, any sin committed, any sexual sin committed outside the perimeter of marriage, that man or that woman is considered an immoral person. Never forget what I just said. He said, don't go to our door. He said, less, less you give your honor to others. Who are others? Then I thought you went to her. You went to only one woman. You went to only one door. You enter in by that door. And you saw only one woman. And the Bible is telling you when you enter in there, you will give your honor to others. So who are the others? You enter into a room. You thought that it was only a woman there. Not knowing that there were men and women from hell. Demons. That were waiting there. For you. Don't you know that whether you know it or not, men and humans were a gateway. That woman was a gateway from her, of her, or with her, or from her, or at her. Fix it. Are you here, somebody? He said, let you give your honor to others. And they're out there. He said, and your yes to the cruel one. Your yes. 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 Are you listening? That is the reason the Holy Spirit said, go there. Yes. Yes. You give your yes to others. Are you here? So the demons that are there, they were just waiting for you. They were waiting for somebody they will put in bondage. For years. So that you see. Eh? Why? I, I told you some, just a, a week or two ago that there is a message that the Lord I'm believing God for. Some have come. I'm still waiting for the rest. What is the time frame for the penalty of our sin? If the Lord says that those who bow their head to graven image and idol, I, the Lord, I visit the iniquity of that error, even unto the third and the fourth generation, he's telling you about time. Time to pay for that evil. So imagine people committed this this atrocity. Amen. First generation. First generation is 100 years. Second generation, two. Third generation, three. Fourth generation, 400 years. So anybody born within this time frame suffer this iniquity. The consequences of this error. So imagine somebody goes in, into a woman. You, you, go, you are not married. And you commit this atrocity. And you think you have gone free. You may go free with pleasure. Amen. But there are people who have taken over your years. You will pay for it. I'm telling you. And people who go in there, they are devout. The Bible calls them simple men. Simple means that you lack knowledge. And then, your years is taken. And yet, within the year of your a, a, a suffering, God, Lord, I want to be married. Oh. God, God, not blessing you. God, da, 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 da. And demons are operating in your life. Making sure that anything, and so long as you don't confess this sin, spiritually, it has more power and potency. Listen, gentlemen, because it becomes a platform and a ground for accusation, and the devil will use it as a platform to stand even against God. There is no other way around it until you are brought to the place of repentance. And what else does he say? Look at it. Not only your ears. Remember in, in, in oh, I just entered another service now. Which can the Holy Spirit? Eh? Now, now, when you go now to, uh, don't go there, don't go there, leave this scripture here. When you go to Joy chapter 2, the verse 25, and even God said, He said, The yes which the locusts, the palmer worm, have eaten, I will restore. So there are yes that were lost, and there are yes that can be lost. Lost to what? Lost to productivity. 
everything you do doesn't happen. I mean, no harvest. You struggle and struggle and struggle year in, year out. And if by chance the wicked one who have taken over your years of productivity and blessing, ladies and gentlemen, are your case without you repenting, no, anything you do, even God tried to do for you, will happen. Why? Because of the accusation that are levied against you spiritually. And when God wants to move, the devil says, you can't move because this person hasn't repented yet of this sin. And that was the issue of that lady that came into the office. And what else does it, does it say? Consuming locusts. Oh, I said, don't go to joy. They say, went to joy. Proverbs chapter 5 now. Let's go to 10 now. Less aliens be filled with your wealth. Oh oh. Oh oh. A man went into a house of a woman to go have fun. Then you now realize that there were other people there waiting. Now the Bible tells you that these are aliens. Ladies and gentlemen, that they've taken over your years of productivity, they've taken over your honor, and it tells you your wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, will be filled by aliens. So what does it mean? The man, the man has the wealth, a wealth that he didn't come in with into that room. But the wealth is somewhere. So the moment the demons waiting for him takes over, they take over not only his life, but his years of productivity. If he has wealth, they have taken over the wealth. Then you see people all of a sudden become broke. Even if they don't take your wealth, trust me, they are doing something behind that you don't see. They are, either they are taking your wealth or they are taking your children. You must pay for it. And your labor go to the house of a foreigner. Eh? Someone that take over your, your whatever. Let me not leave you to go like this. <laughs> that is the truth. So these are the reasons why we are praying for God to do and do and do and do. And the devil said, we are not leaving up. So long as it takes for us to repent, that long we will stay. This word is, is us. Honor. Took over honor. And the Bible says in Genesis, the 38th chapter, when Jake, uh, Judah, um, uh, Judah, okay, slept with Tamar, took three things from him. Amen. Took the signet, took the staff, and took the cord. Cord means honor. See, a ring or signet means authority. And the staff, ladies and gentlemen, means profession. So, which means that they've taken over profession, taken over your authority to operate. Ladies and gentlemen, our authority you know, that ends you your right to operate, and they have taken over your honor. Are you here? But if you are reading this Bible, you are just reading as if you are reading uh, uh, Adli Chase. And you don't have spiritual understanding to this thing. You are doomed. Are you here? Now, I want you to do this prayer while you are seated. By adventure, you have been caught up in certain things like this. Eh? You are going to tell God to, you know, tell God that you are sorry. So whatever will be taken from you, solely from you, let it be returned back. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now lift up your voice as you pray. You might be married now. But the act was committed years ago. That I've not yet been repented from or confessed. Now confess it before God. So you can be free. Oh, the Spirit of God was ministering to me. The son, they make sure you 
you let some of them repent of this. If you have ever committed adultery, listen very carefully. Bible says, even in chapter 6 and 7, especially 7, can a man take fire to his bosom and not be burnt? He said, he who takes, I think it's the verse 9, he who takes another man's wife or woman, listen, gentlemen, he said, shall not escape it. I say that again. Shall not what? Escape it. Look, this sin doesn't matter how that woman eh, entices you. I'm talking to the men here. And she's married. Until you never want to do is touch another man's wife. You can be killed. Not just physically now, if the husband finds out. Even God himself, when you go to Genesis chapter 20, he dealt with Abimelech or Jera on that issue. You took another man's wife and that night the Lord visited him. He said, you are a dead man. How can God introduce himself like that? He didn't say, I'm Jehovah God, uh, Yahweh. Imagine you just come into your dream and say, you are a dead man. Okay, why now? Said because you took someone else's wife. And meanwhile, he has not even had any knowledge of the woman. Just because he just took over the woman, they also said you are dead. Listen. It's a taboo before God. If a man comes to you, we men, even if your husband doesn't perform well, teach him to perform well again. Yes, sir. Are you here? Don't lure yourself into another man's hand. It doesn't matter whether they speak good English or not. Don't go there. You will, I'm telling you, you will pay for it. Your children will pay for it. Your generation will pay for it. He said you cannot escape it. The only way you can escape it is to rightly go before God and tell him how sorry you are. Then you stop it. Don't continue in it. Listen, gentlemen. You are selling your generation. The Bible says, I think I have to do a different teaching on this one. Are you here? The Bible says in chapter 5, he said, let the breast of your wife satisfy you. Amen. That's what the Bible called. He said the breast. There is no other a different analogy for you. He said the breast of your wife. Let it satisfy you. Should a man disperse his fountain everywhere? Are you here? That devil is a liar. What have entered us? Lift up your right hand. In the days of our ignorance, the Bible said, the Lord overlook. Amen. It's the Lord who overlook, but the devil doesn't overlook. Amen. And we are hurt by these Amen. things. So, per adventure, you have been guilty. Listen, gentlemen. Tell the Lord to forgive you. Amen. If that thing has been recorded somewhere in the spirit against you, working against you, and this time you lift up your voice to pray, the devil stands against it. Many people that are supposed to be enjoying marriage, they are not enjoying marriage. Why? Because you destroyed someone else's marriage. Before you were married. Eh? You entered into someone else's home. Messed up the home. Now your finances are not right because the finances that could have been going to that household was being shared with you by the man or the woman. And the devil is using against you spiritually. Listen, gentlemen. We cannot come to this place of truth so we can be free. Now lift up your voice and talk to God. What is the land? What is the land? 
You are holy. It's a holy God. Holy. Are you children are paying for the error of the father. The reason why some of your children might not be married now is as a result of maybe what papa did or mama did against someone else's marriage. And the devil is standing that your own children will not get married. Or maybe the one that was offended now place a curse that what has been done to me to my marriage let it have effects against your children. Very possible. And curses that are placed like that are justifiable. Because the Bible says that a curse without a cause shall not alive. But whereby there is a reason for it to stand, then it will stand. You are going to pray and tell the Lord, if my inability to be married is as a result of mama's error, we cannot be pointing everything to the devil or at the devil. Listen, gentlemen. Some of these things are things we have done and we are forgotten. You forgot, but in the realm of the spirit, it's not forgotten. Listen, gentlemen. They are detailed. They are recorded. Listen, gentlemen. And they are being used as a way of accusing and to stand against us even in the place of prayer. You are going to pray and tell the Lord that anything I have done in this regard that may affect my children or is affecting the inability of my children to be married. And if you are one that is still involved in this type of thing, I want to encourage you to stop now on this platform. Why don't you stop? Why don't you stop? Why you hear the voice of the Lord? The Bible says, do not harden your heart. I mean, do not harden your heart. Like in the rebellion of those who rebel against God, in the wilderness, and because of this, many of them fail and will not inherit the promised land. There are many promises God has for us, for our children. Why do you put the life and the well-being of your children at the expense of 30 minutes of pleasure? Why don't you repent and say, no, I refuse to do this because I know that it will have effect against my children. It may not have direct effect against the one you see now. And somehow, someday, maybe your children might perventure find a way to get married. But remember that that sin will be revisited upon them somehow. Repent today. And even many of us now, we need to repent of these things. If you are having effect, if that thing, what mama did is the reason why you cannot be married, tell the Lord now, God, I stand in the place of my mother and father. Forgive them so that I can go free. Lift up your voice as you pray. Holy. Pray the gospel, pray the gospel, pray the gospel, pray the 
Lift up your right hand. Father, I pray for your people. Amen. That that charge and case that was brought against them, upon which files, or which files have been closed as a done deal, that this affliction and this error must be paid for. And as a result of that, your people are suffering. The effect of this affliction and satanic judgments that have been issued out against them. I pray today by the platform of mercy and on the platform of mercy, for it is written that mercy I plead before your court of heaven mm. that you will look down upon your people, mm. that every close case that the enemy have closed against your people, Lord, by the supreme blood of the Lamb, we reopen those cases now. Amen. And I demand by the reason of your mercy and forgiveness, let the cases be discharged. Amen. Let your people be discharged. Amen. And let your people be acquitted. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. When next they pray, any power, forms of powers, that may stand to accuse and to hinder their prayer, Father, let them lose their ground mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Let their oppositions and, uh, 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 and that which they do to negate the prayers of your people, let it be cancelled in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. And any request that ought to have been answered, that we aren't answered as a result of lack of knowledge and repentance and, and forgiveness, Father, today, as your people have heard your word, your word of truth, Lord, I pray that you will have mercy upon them. Amen. And let now that blessing be released over them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I pray for you that every generational affliction that have been issued out against your bloodline, let that generational affliction be cancelled. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And every effect of this evil, let it be broken. Amen. Your children will not pay for the sins of the, of the fathers. In the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And I thank you, Father. Thank you. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. There is none like unto thee. Amen. Then I was taken into the spirit, and I saw the head of a man. And immediately I concluded the prayer. I immediately I saw the hair of the man grow. Then I asked in the spirit, what meaneth this? And the spirit of the Lord will say to me that, Due to that prayer now, restoration have been given to people. Forgiveness have been given to people. Ladies and gentlemen, and whenever you see a bald head in the spirit, it suggests, ladies and gentlemen, something is amiss somewhere. So I pray for you today that whatsoever it is that I've been working against you, right now is here by counsel in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever does not promote for success, does not promote for prosperity, in your life is here by taking away Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. and everything you do as from now may you receive the grace to succeed yeah, receive it. ah your amen send me out of this place I receive it hallelujah amen. god bless every one of you amen thank you for your patience hallelujah in hearing that word it is very important dealing with you know praying against you know prayer hindrances you know these are the things that will show up for us to talk about Hallelujah. And because this, uh, God knows all truth that these are the things that are hindering many of us. Are you here, somebody? You know, the Lord richly bless every one of you in Jesus' mighty name.